Right then, well I've got some today that might help some people who are struggling with edge joints. Um, and it's understandable, edge joints can actually be quite a, a, a tricky thing to get right, particularly if they've got to be glue grade. You know, you've got to bring two boards together and get them just right. And what you're wanting is almost that little gap in the middle that gives it that spring. And that way you can basically just put one clamp in the middle and the ends automatically self-pressure. So a lot of people struggle with it. And like I say, it's understandable because not only have you got to get the edge square ideally, um, you've got to get it twist free, you know, so it's got to be square along its edge. And then you've got to put this little spring in it. Um, so this method is going to help help you out really if you if you're doing if you do anything like an edge joint or if you just want a nice square edge you know this uh, this is basically going to do it for you so the first thing whenever you're doing an edge joint is just to make sure your board sits somewhat like on the bench because if it isn't if it's rattling it means you're out of twist and if this is twisted depending on where you put your square it's going to give you a different reading that makes sense. So you can never actually truly tell if you're square. So first thing to do is just make sure it sits somewhat like. And I'll show you this trick with my rough and ready approach, which is, I normally just use my twist sticks. So they're parallel-ish, they're about the same thickness. So what I do is I put them down on the bench top. This is why I really like this style of spike, the paint scraper spike. I lift it up so they sit underneath. They don't have to go under, they can actually sit free because these are going to take no resistance. I'm going to take a board, plonk it on, just make sure it's overhanging your stick a bit. Don't have to be precise. Wedge it in. Don't do this. But just knock it into the spike a bit. And that's going to stop this end being able to shift. And then you use a plane with the workbench top to almost act as a shooting board. And then you can see how easy that is. And because I can see underneath, it's great if you go into a gauge line because you can actually see your gauge line. Instead of when you're on the top of the bloody thing, you're doing this constantly. You don't have to do that here. But you can see your work. Where you go. So if you just wanted a square edge, that's all you've got to do. But if I wanted to get that spring, what I'm actually going to do is start in about an inch, stop about an inch. Then I'm going to take another shave in, in a bit more, out a bit more. I'm basically going to repeat that until the plane doesn't take a shave in. Once it stops taking a shave in, in this centre portion, I know it's scalloped. And then we're going to take a full blown pass probably two to three till it kisses that center again. So in a bit, again, because we can see the board, it's dead easy to start and stop in a bit more. Just repeat that. See now I'm struggling to take a shave in because the plane's bridging the high spots. So now to just feather it all in, start at the end. You can almost hear it engaging with those start stops we've previously done. All the way along. One more for luck. And that edge will now be perfect. All right, now this also um, brings on a little method that I normally would tell you never to do. And that is lateral adjustment. So what I can do, what I mean by that is, see how I can adjust the iron with this. If it's a wooden plane, you just whack the iron. And the reason when I'm doing edge joints, I tell people not to do that, is because when you grind your iron, when you sharpen, it's always going to have, even if you aim flat, an ever so slight radius. And the course of the iron, the more radius you want. 
So if we're doing something like this, it's a bit general purpose. We're gonna have a little bit of a radius. So what we can do, we take that to our advantage. When it's in the vise, if I plane with the piece true to center, use my finger as a fence as I go, takes an even shaving. If I check with my square, and we was high on this edge, in order to correct that, I wouldn't start messing with this bloody lateral adjuster. There's no, you don't do that to get that centralized. He said, what I'd do is I'd walk the plane over to the, to the edge I want to remove. Because now the center of the plane, where it cuts deepest, is over the high spot. And you basically manipulate the squareness that way. Rather than trying to twist the plane or lean the plane or anything like that. You can do it subtly just by where you position from center. Now with this method, because this is fixed and rigid, and because the plane is fixed and rigid to the bench, we can actually adjust that squareness if we need to with the lateral adjuster. Now if you're using a run of the mill plane, that's square enough, nearly always are they square enough. And you can also adjust by making sure that these are the same. You know, if one of these is high, you see naturally that's now canted it up. Again, it's another great thing if you've actually got to put some angles, some very precise angles on stuff, you can do that. I sit in it like that, obviously. But again, if you're doing this as an edge joint, the squareness is actually not that important because what we can do, um, these two are all different thicknesses, so it's not going to work to do an example. But I'd pull these two together. Say these two wanted to be jointed. Draw a line on them. So one of these boards, I'm going to do... with the line upwards facing me. I'm take my shaving, it's gonna put that little spring in, go over it just to kiss that spring out. The next board, I'm gonna put that one down. So now that line's facing downwards. And when I go and do it that way, if there is any um, discrepancy in that angle, they're gonna cancel each other out. So these could be this bloody angle for all it mattered if you did that because they would as they go together they they kind of mirror each other so to sum it all up if you're struggling with edge jointing in a conventional way normally in the face vice then a dead simple way is to set the board on summit flat and treat your bench as an entire shooting board instead if things are looking out of square you could always adjust the lateral adjuster on your plane Though even simpler is to remember that turning one of the boards upside down will always ensure that they make up a true 180 degrees together. Now, if you didn't want to do it with a rough and ready sticks, I'd use that because they're normally under the bench. If you wanted to make some proper, um, I'd say a bit of man-made material is your, your best job because it's even in thickness. And it's very flat, top and bottom bit of ply, MDF. You could even use a pine board, you know, if you had to. And what you can do is the same thing. You, you drop it down, throw your work on, but this time, because you're not limited to your wind, you know, your twist stick length, you can, uh, you can go the full length of the bench if you needed to. And if I had long lengths to do, for example, set that a bit better. I don't know where the bloody only mallet's gone set that in so it always wants to be in the spike because that way it can't move laterally on you get a pump clamp pinch it down and again this could be right over here and now we can actually use both hands we can really focus on keeping that plane pressed down and 
where we're positioning those shavings. And your only limitation to the thickness really on this is how the iron is, you know, the depth you've got. Something probably better would be a big heavy wooden plane. I think this is dull. This, uh, this works even better. I love wooden planes, you can just hold them. You know, these things, they're, they're dictating to you. This thing isn't. You can just whiz through it. And then you're done. So it's, you're not gonna get better edges than that really. And you don't even have to think. Now, for real big jobs where the edge joints are just too hefty to take this approach, you'll need to fine tune your skills a bit and go all in with the hand plane. Gluing up the top in our trestle table build was one of them jobs, and you'll see how I tackle that with a full chapter now available for free over on the website. The link should be down there somewhere in the description. 